All right, we're breaking down this idea of your brain and hormones and how it's all connected. I talked about something called the hypothalamus in this video right here. Check it out. That's actually part one of this idea that your brain is actually the command center for your hormones more so than all the different organs that most people talk about when they're talking about hormone balance, your ovaries, uterus, etc. So now I want to get into a little bit more about the chemistry here and the hormone patterns and how they're linked, right? So if we understand that we have the sensing center in our brains that's understanding what's going on in our environment and then directing the pituitary what to do when it comes to hormone balance and hormone production, then we can kind of dial apart why different hormone patterns make us feel in a particular way. Let's talk, for example, for estrogen. Estrogen has receptors all throughout the brain, honestly, throughout the body. When we present with low estrogen, whether that's because the birth control pill has suppressed our estrogen, or it's because you're in perimenopause or menopause, then we know your levels of serotonin and dopamine, which are happy hormones, right? Those are the happy neurotransmitters, get impacted. That's why there's more depression in a hormone shift that lends itself to low estrogen. Now the flip can happen as well. If there's too much estrogen on board, right? That's an overload. Think of a bucket that's kind of overfilled and we don't know what to do with it. Then again, those neurotransmitters, serotonin, dopamine, even GABA, get impacted, leaving you feeling depressed or anxious. And in the most extreme versions of this, I've actually seen patients develop something like OCD or even bipolar disease when they have a hormone shift at these extreme levels. So that's low estrogen. In addition to that, we know that progesterone has to be in a happy place because it is directly linked, again, to serotonin and dopamine. Too little progesterone, it's the anxiety, the heart palpitations, waking up between two and four o'clock in the morning, not really sure why you're feeling sort of out of your body. That's how a lot of people describe it. Just feeling like they're just sort of disengaged from the rest of their body. That's a low progesterone situation for sure. Definitely connected to your neurotransmitters that make you feel good. At the same time, too much progesterone. What's a classic example of that? That's pregnancy, right? Too much progesterone, we're foggy, we can't focus, we feel like we're kind of walking in water or on sand and we can't get anywhere. Also impacts your neurotransmitters. Now those are just two, estrogen and progesterone and how they impact your mood and your brain and how these ideas are so intricate and interconnected. In addition to that, there's the thyroid, right? Low thyroid can trigger depression, too much thyroid hormone, anxiety. Cortisol, we know for sure, impacts mood and how you're able to function and can really present in different ways. It can present as complete fatigue where you can't move forward or it can present as depression, anxiety, or even being overly agitated depending on what stage of adrenal fatigue you're in and where your cortisol levels happen to be. Now I talk a lot about adrenal fatigue in this video right here. Check it out if you wanna learn more about that particular concept. So all these different hormone patterns, right? Again, thinking through the interconnectedness of the entire body. That's why I'm so passionate about a holistic approach because the body and all its different systems don't live in isolation. So we've got the hypothalamus and the pituitary sensing your environment, directing everybody else what to do. We have the happy neurotransmitter, serotonin, dopamine, GABA, essential for a healthy functioning brain and a healthy functioning mood also intertwined with what the hormones are going to do. So you can't talk about one without talking about the other. And traditionally what happens is if you present with symptoms of mood disorders, right, you end up with a prescription for either a medication for depression or anxiety. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just that it's incredibly short-sighted because what might be really happening, right, is that all these different hormone shifts are causing changes in serotonin, dopamine, and GABA, leaving you feeling unhinged and not really sure of what's happening to you or what's wrong with you until you end up looking at yourself being like, who is this and what am I gonna do next? So I'm hoping in this particular video, you understand the brain hormone connection where the neurotransmitters now, right? If we think about it as sort of a cross with the brain and the hormones, now there are these neurotransmitters on one side communicating with the hormones on the other side, but it's all connected. 
all intertwined and ultimately really impacting how you present yourself in the world. And think about it, guys, that's going to impact your relationships, it's going to impact your work, it's going to impact how you parent, it's going to impact how you feel about yourself. So all of this is so important to get a grasp on and get a hold on and really be able to move forward. All right, in my next video, this is a big topic, I get it, it's a lot. In my next video though, we're gonna treatment plan this whole thing out. We're gonna start with your brain, move on to the pituitary, move into the end organs and the hormones so that you have a plan that works for you. I post new videos every week. Don't forget to like and subscribe.